Today, we're jumping back into the Affinity app, which recently became absolutely free. And specifically today, we're going to delve into macros. This is a topic that came up in one of my recent videos, and a lot of people have asked me how to use these. So in this video, I'm going to show you to do exactly that. So first things first, make sure that you are in the Pixel Studio. This is because we're working with photographs or bitmap images. This is the way the macros tend to work best. Now we need to open up the macro panel. And to do that, we come up to the menu at the top, choose Window, come down to pixel and from there choose macro this will then dock that over the left hand side but if you want this as a floating panel you absolutely can do so now let's take a quick look at the actual macro panel and then i'll quickly explain what a macro is you can see we've got some icons at the top to import export add these to our library so we can create our own custom library and add as many macros as we want we can then reset this, which will wipe out all of the instructions. We've got the record, we've got the stop recording, and we have the play to play a macro. Now, what exactly is a macro? Well, a macro is effectively a series of instructions that can be repeated and played back at any time and applied to an image. The cool thing with this in Affinity is we can apply it on an image basis, like we're going to do in this example, or we can actually use the batch option and apply this and do other things at the same time. I'm going to show you both methods on how you can utilize these macros. So before we do, we need to record a macro. So let's do just that. I want to apply a kind of stylized look to this particular image and then across a website I want to keep that same stylized look so recording a macro means we can repeatedly play that back and apply it to a batch of images in one go super quick and easy so let's start by recording our macro so on the macro panel we're going to come to the record button and press it so now whatever we do will be recorded some options will be kind of taken exactly as they are some will give us options to tweak I'll show you how that works in a moment so first things first let's start to make some changes to the image I'm not going to go into too much detail here because this is just to demonstrate how it works but let's come over and apply a couple of different things first things first let's come over and choose something like an adjustment and from here let's choose the option for curves so to come down to our curves option inside here let's just make a little tweak to this we want to sort of make those blacks look a little bit washed out a little bit of tweaking going on a bit of vibrance there to it to kind of give this sort of trendy look that squashes or crushes those black a little bit although some people do complain if I say crushed blacks so there you go so there's the first thing done so let's just say we're happy with that let's close it down now you'll see under the macro panel, we've got add a curves adjustment and set the curves adjustment parameter. So it's recorded two different steps. First one, we've applied the actual curves adjustment layer. The second, the changes we've made to it. So we've recorded those steps. Now let's say we want to apply kind of vignette effect. So this time we're going to come over to the filters option, scroll through until we find the option for a vignette. Now we can create our own custom vignette. So let's just bump this up so you can see if we increase it, we kind of lighten the edges, darken the edges, whatever we want to do. So let's just drop that right the way down, make it kind of quite extreme. We'll adjust our hardness so we can see the shape and just tweak this a little bit to get what we're looking for. Something like this maybe. And then we'll soften that down and we'll scale that up a little bit. So there we go. So we're now creating a kind of custom look to this. So let's add one more thing. Let's say we're going to add in one more adjustment. And for this one, we're going to choose the vibrance option. And we're going to say we want to desaturate a little bit and we want to bump the vibrance up. So we get a kind of stylized look. So let's close that down and let's stop this. So we're going to click the stop. So that's now recorded our macro. As you can see, all the changes we made are listed inside here. These check marks say that they will be applied as part of this macro. So you can enable or disable things. So if you had a particular sort of adjustment that didn't really require to be added to a particular image you're working on, you could just deselect that and that will not be applied. Then we've got these ones, these little cogs. Now these cogs allow us to change a parameter or more. So if we click on this, you can see there's our vignette parameters. So exposure, hardness and so on. So if we wanted to tweak this, we absolutely can do. Same thing goes for this, for our vibrance. We can adjust the vibrance and saturation here. So you may say, actually, we want to sort of bump the saturation up and kind of oversaturate it. Well, there you go. We've kind of applied that. So that now has created our macro. Now, let's open up another image. 
So there's our second image. And as you can see, our macro has now completely disappeared. If we go back to our original image, there's our macro. So how do we actually go and apply this and make it available to our other images? Well, what we need to do is we need to come up and save this. So we're going to add it to our library. Let's click to add to the library. Our category default, that's fine. And we're going to give this a name. We'll just click crushed style and click OK. Now you'll notice that we get a new tab open up called library. And inside there, you can see there's all of the macros that have been created. Some of these are automatically created when you install Affinity. We've also got our crushed style, which is our custom macro we created. As you can see, there's six steps to this. So now if we go over to our second image, with our library panel open, you can see there's our crushed style. We can click, boom, that's now been applied. Now, you'll also notice inside the library, there's a couple of other options. So depending upon the kind of macro you create, you can control various different aspects on how it interacts with the image that you currently want to apply it to. For example, if you've got something that changes the dimensions of the image, you'll see we can choose to handle it via no scale, so it isn't applied to this image, to stretch the image, to set a max fit or a minimum fit, so we can control how those different changes inside a macro will be applied to this image. Then you've got your alignment, and this is basically where the sort of registration point is when you work with any of the scaling. So you can set this to be the bottom right, bottom left, and so on, or the center, and when it scales based upon what we set up in this first dropdown, that will be its kind of reference point, so it'll scale from that point, either larger, smaller, whatever we choose. Now let's see how we can apply this to a batch process. So let's close these images down so we've got nothing open. And let's come up to File and choose the option for New Image Process. Inside there, we've got our batch job. Let's open this up. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail about this because I've already covered it in its own dedicated video, which I will link here and in the description down below. So I'm going to run through this super quickly. First thing we want to do is add a couple of images. So let's choose Add. I'll choose this resized folder and click OK. If we want to set up what file formats we want to save these as, we can do. So let's say we want to save these as WebP. We don't want an Affinity file. We can set width and height adjustments here, but please bear in mind that if you've got images that are smaller than the values to set inside here, they will be scaled up, which is kind of annoying. There's no option to kind of override that. You'll also notice we've got these three dots. Now, comments in the previous video, and this may change at the time you see this, these were only available on the Mac. For some reason, on the PC, on Windows, they weren't showing up. So hopefully this will be addressed soon. But what these are is some additional options for the file format, the compression, and those kinds of things that will be applied to it. So choose whatever is relevant to you. So for example, we'll say we want to set this to something like 60. You can choose what document format. You can choose the resampling option, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll leave that as it is. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to set the macro. So you can see there's all the available ones, which are the pre-installed. And there's our crushed style at the end. Let's click on that, click Apply. That will be an applied macro. So now all these images will be saved in the WebP format and have the applied macro, the crushed style, applied to it. So now if we click on OK, now all those images have been processed and the macro, the crushed style macro has been applied. Let's open up the images and take a quick look. So there's our images and as you can see, the effect has been applied to them. They look particularly awful because they were already stylized. But you can see how we could easily apply that same styling across all the images by using the macro option inside Affinity. And there we go. That's how easy it is to create macros inside Affinity, how to apply them either on an individual basis or as a macro as part of a batch process. Very simple. If you want to grab yourself a copy of Affinity, it is absolutely free. Link is in the description down below. Grab it, install it, and you have an absolute powerhouse. Now, if you want me to cover any more Affinity tools or options, please do let me know in the comment section down below the kinds of things you'd like me to cover. And I'll take a look at creating those videos if enough people are interested. As always, all applicable links in the description down below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.